Hello, uh, this is a brief bonus lecture. And what I'm going to do in this lecture is show you that there are an infinite number of prime numbers. In other words, we're going to prove the infinitude of primes. Okay. Now, this is really, one, honestly, one of the gems of the history of mathematics and the history of science. And using, as we'll see in a moment, just primitive tools for the most part, um, we can prove that, in fact, there are an infinite number of prime numbers. And as I've indicated, this proof goes back to uh, someone called Euclid, who is generally considered the founder, one of the founders of geometry. And the proof dates to at least 300 BC. Okay? So let's begin with the definition of what a prime number is. A prime number, beginning with the number 2, is an integer greater than or equal to 2, whose only whole number divisors are 1 and itself. So for instance, 2 is the smallest prime. 3 is the next prime in the sequence of primes. 5 is the next uh, 7, 11, 13, and so forth. And you want to notice, right, for instance, like the number 9 is not on this list. It's called composite because it's divisible by 3. So it's not only divisible by 1 and itself. Now, the proof technique we're going to use is something called proof by contradiction. What we want to do is prove the assertion that there are an infinite number of primes. Okay, so we want, let's just say, to show that there are an infinite number of primes. So let's just say infinite primes. Okay. The way proof by contradiction works, it sounds a little bit backwards the first time you see it, we are actually going to assume that this uh, assertion or this claim is false and then arrive at some inherent contradiction. So in other words, we want to show that there are an infinite number of primes. So what we're going to assume, contrarily, is that, well, that there aren't an infinite number of primes. In other words, there are a finite number of primes. So we assume there are a finite number of primes. And then we will show, sort of logically, that this can't happen. In other words, we're going to arrive at a contradiction. And because we've arrived at a contradiction, that will conversely show that there must be an infinite number of primes. There's something you want to assert, okay? Call it claim A. And we're going to sue, assume, excuse me, not A. In other words, that A, that claim does not hold. And then we arrive at a contradiction, and that then thusly shows us that A actually had to be true by contradiction. It's quite ingenious, as it turns out. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so we're going to assume that there are a finite number of primes. We're going to prove the infinity of primes by contradiction. So if there are a finite number of primes, it stands to reason I could enumerate those primes. We'll call them P1, P2, P3, up to Pn, up to some finite number. Now we're going to introduce this clever step. Let's define a new number. We'll call it P star. And I'm going to define P star as the product of all the primes, again, we've assumed there's a finite number, and now importantly, plus one. Now the question I want to pose is, well, let's consider P star. Is P star prime, or is it composite? Okay. Right, it either has to be prime or composite. There's kind of no middle ground. So let's consider, well, could it be prime? I claim that P star cannot be prime. The reason it cannot be prime is because notice, when I take the product of all primes and add one to it, I get a number that's bigger than any number on this list. And that list was the total list of primes. There's a finite number. So thus, if P star were prime, it would be bigger than any prime on the known list. And that's a contradiction. It can't be prime because we listed all the primes here. It can't be on that list. So. P star, therefore, cannot be prime. Ah, so therefore, it must follow that P star is composite. But we're going to see a problem with the claim that P star is composite as well. Let me just mention one little side sidebar here, just a little result we need to sort of show this more completely. There's something called the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. I'll just abbreviate it FTA. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase here. But the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic basically says that every whole number, right, or integer, is divisible by a prime number. Okay. 
And you actually, I, I would say, know this maybe from grade school math in a way, right? Every number can be written as a product of primes. That factorization is called the prime factorization of a number. Of a number. So for instance, 21, that's a composite number. I can write that as 3 times 7. There's the prime factorization of that integer 21. So the fundamental theorem, excuse me, of arithmetic says, again, every whole number is divisible by a prime. P star isn't prime, so it has to be composite, okay? So if it's composite, it's a whole number, essentially, and it must therefore be divisible by a prime. Ah, but we have a problem here because P star, in fact, is not divisible by its construction by any prime because when I divide by a prime here, any known prime, I get remainder one. So P star is therefore also not composite. Okay, so what does this all mean? Let's, let's tie it together. So we've assumed, again, by contradiction, there are a finite number of primes. Okay, I can enumerate all those primes. We then construct a new number, call it P star, which is defined as the product of all those primes plus one. Then we pose the question, is P star prime or composite? It has to be one or the other. Again, there's no middle ground. Cannot be prime because P star is larger than any of the uh, pre uh, previously listed primes. So it can't be prime, so it must therefore be composite. But it also, check that, can't be composite because by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic or prime factorization, however you want to think of that, every whole number, P star is a whole number, is divisible by a prime and p star gives you remainder one whenever I divide it by a prime. So what have we done? We've adduced uh, a number that's neither prime nor composite. That is a contradiction. And here's kind of the punchline of the proof now. What did we assume? We assume there's a finite number of primes. From that assumption, we've arrived at an irresolvable contradiction. We have a number that's neither prime nor composite. That contradiction means that the, uh, the assumption at the beginning is false, and thus there are an infinite number of primes, and that concludes the proof.